Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is The Piracy Show. Now, on today's show, we're basically, you're catching me at the beginning of an experiment. Um, the experiment could have only lasted a single episode, so far it looks like it's going to carry on, but the idea is, is that I'm kind of refitting out my Vanguard Warden. Um, I had to reset my account anyways due to, uh, you know, I did the stupid thing of logging off in the bed of my ship to test it and then my character was stuck in a permanent loading screen. But I've been loading up my ship for, you know, not so much getting around the universe fast because ordinarily in a ship like the Vanguard Warden I would use the XL1, you know, quantum drive. But I'm now actually moving down to the Bolon because... You know, even though it's it's considerably slower, it's far more fuel efficient. And the reason behind that is, is that I want to go out and I want to commit crimes. I want to earn crime stat rating, and then I want to see how long I can sustain it. So I'm going to have to be fairly careful with what I do. And the Bolon is, uh, is part of that. Um, being able to get around in the solar system of Stanton is going to be a necessity but at the same time i only really have one place to go to park my ship because we know that logging off in a ship does not work we've tested it and reaped the unfortunate benefits of that test so whatever we do wherever we go we always got to have enough fuel to make it back to grim hex and with something like the XL1, it, yeah, it's fast and it gets around the universe real quick. But the problem is, is that it also burns up a lot of fuel. So that could leave us in a position where we're not able to take advantage of certain opportunities or we're not able to make it home. Especially, you know, considering, you know, we're, we're still at a stage where the UI that we have is not very intuitive. And so it's very easy to lose track of how much quantum fuel you're burning through. So that was kind of one of the big things. And I use energy based weapons because I didn't want to have to deal with the possibility of running out of ammunition for the most part. That's kind of what the experiment is. Also, when looking at missions, I was thinking about, OK, I've got to pick missions very carefully because I can't pick a mission like, let's say here, lights out. Shutting down a Comrade and then standing around for five minutes, that's not on the menu. I have to go out and look for like the criminal assassination missions where you're going out and you're like, go in, kill this person and then get the hell out of there. You know, that is those are the types of missions that I'm looking for. Shutting down the, um, you know, the scanning arrays that, you know, Hurston security is put up around this place or that place. Those types of missions, those are doable missions. But anything that's like, hey, you know, fly to, you know, SPK, park your ship, go inside, get into a gunfight and then come back out and fly away and you get X amount of reward. That's not going to work. And same with bunker missions. That is not going to fly at all. So it's a very limited array of missions that are available to me. But I'm doing them anyways because I want to run that crime stat up. I want to get it to maximum. And then I want to see how long I can hold on to that max crime stat and how many crimes I can commit added on to that. I want to basically get to a point that when and if, more likely when, I am sentenced to Kleischer Penitentiary, I want to see how much, you know, crime or how much, uh, sorry, how much time I have to I end up having to do as a player I want to kind of explore what the limits of that are and test these things out. of course we're at a very early stage of the game this is kind of when you want to really get a grip on you know this type of activity now one of the aspects of this that I had hoped to test though unfortunately we are not there yet who knows maybe in 313 we might get uh, a little taste of it but I remain doubtful was the idea that you know CIG presented recently as uh, I think it was late 2020 uh, they were talking about the idea of hacking off someone's crime stat someone else's crime stat you know performing a service for that player and ma basically making it so players could exchange this service 
And I was initially very hopeful that this was something that was going to make it into the game sooner rather than later. Uh, I, I mean, we kind of knew it was a thing that CIG was talking about. And I had always kind of figured that this was going to be something that would turn up in the game sooner or later. And I had kind of built my account, or in this case, accounts, around the idea of that there would always be someone on the outside of the criminal underworld who for all intents and purposes looks like every other player that would be able to remove crime stat for me that's something that i wanted to explore you know kind of explore in the future but unfortunately it's just not here yet we got close once cig was flirting with the idea of putting it into the game and then kind of stepped back i guess they were working on something else and it really hasn't moved uh since and they haven't mentioned it specifically or even vaguely even when they were talking about bringing in hacking for 313 there was really no mention of it it may be included as the package but who knows i would i remain doubtful i mean i had always kind of built my account around the idea that that would be a service that i would require from time to time so when i purchased my original herald back in 2014 i had actually purchased a second one and put it on that account in the off chance that I would need it for something like that. And so that is uh, that is a seed that I planted, God, six years ago, over six years ago, and we're still waiting for that to bear fruit. I don't know, maybe it's like an olive tree and it takes 20 years, <laughs> hopefully not, but um, hopefully that's gonna bear some fruit in the future, but unfortunately we can't test that, but what we can do is kind of experiment with the idea of evading capture you know what do you have to do to survive what tricks do you have to learn what you know what places do you have to stay away from how do you have to alter your quantum roots we've gotten a lot of little small fixes in the game that for a lot of people may not you know, they may not initially notice but they're actually kind of important things that kind of help us work around some of our problems. Some of the little fixes might seem completely inconsequential, like the fact that we no longer have to use the inner thought system to, you know, navigate an elevator. But another thing that people may not have noticed is that you can actually short jump again, which is something, th which is an ability that had kind of gotten killed by CIG. But what used to happen is that when you shut off your quantum drive, your ship dropped out of quantum. And then CIG made it so your ship would kind of run out the clock and slowly slow down if you shut down your quantum drive. Well, now when I'm experimenting with it, it seems like we come to a dead stop again almost immediately, which allows us to play around with the geometry of a solar system and once again reinforce the idea that quantum interdiction, as in pulling somebody out of quantum, is just virtually impossible. You know, exploring ideas, you know, not just like that, but also what kind of missions to take, where to fly, where to stay away from, what missions work, what missions don't. You know, what kind of time frame do you have? How long before somebody shows up after you enter into an area? You know, explore things like this and try to get a feel for just how dangerous it is. Now, you might say that this kind of exploration, this kind of examination of these things is ultimately pointless because at some point in the near future, hopefully, we're going to get access to Pyro and then pirates will go to Pyro and, you know, the good the good guy players, the White Hats will stay in um, in Stanton. And that's that's the dividing line and that's the way it's going to be. And I agree to an extent, but I think that there's still going to be a reason to operate in the Stanton system from time to time. There may be, you know, rewards for doing so. And, you know, the fact that Grim Hex is there to kind of serve as a bit of a base, even with the departure of Levski for miscreants and near duels of the Star Citizen universe. I, you know, I think that it's obviously going to be there for a reason. And there's going to be some interesting opportunities that open up for criminals if they're willing to work in high security space, whether it's more of, a, you know, like a very carefully planned heist, hopefully, rather than just a flat out, you know, all-out assault which i don't think will bear any real fruit but obviously we're meant to kind of have a little bit of crossover and i kind of want to explore you know while it's kind of easy to do so explore some of these ideas and you know 
check some of this stuff out and see just how dangerous and and how omnipresent that threat is when you just basically just keep racking up crime after crime after crime you know how how crazy is it going to be how many how many times is the ue going to pull you out of quantum how many times are you going to get chased down by bounty hunters is is the game going to become virtually unplayable to the point where you basically just throw your hands up in the air and say shoot me send me to kleischer i don't care anymore you know i want to see i want to see how far you can go with that that's kind of what i want to test so we'll find out <laughs> the heat is on Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.